Good evening, friends, and good evening, colleagues in the marketing profession. Um, thank you very much. My old age, he was a senior in college. I like, I like the blue one. <laughs> thank you very much. I like the blue one. Thank you. Um, thanks a lot for inviting me, Colombo. This is a wonderful break from the circuit of hardcore politics. And I'm very honored to be amongst friends and colleagues to speak to you about city branding, which is clearly something very close to my heart. Um, just so I give my very quick background, the gentleman who was here speaking is such a good friend of mine. Uh, and Chris Crispin was a year ahead of me in college, uh, together with this other fellow here called Solomon Osundwa. Uh, and I was also in college with Colombo. You know, we politicians, like, I, am, I like to say who I went to school with, because the competitor has gone to court to confirm he has gone to school. <laughs> and all you, need, and all, all you need to do is tell us who was your schoolmate. You know, why, and, and that's why I have beef with lawyers. As a marketer, I have beef with lawyers. They know a lot about very little. <laughs> Sometimes I complain about lawyers because they entertain all kinds of arguments. Just tell us and who went to school with you. But um, I really enjoyed listening to you, Chris, and Chris, I really enjoyed your talk. I love Chris because for those of you who don't know, let me tell you the lighter side of him. He was one of the best party organizers when we were in college. <laughs> you knew if a bash is put together by Chris, now that's a bash. So his love of music is not something. And he was always so kind. I remember one time my parents used to live in Juja and I had to come because we were on strike or something. I had to come to Kabete for a bash. And Osundo obviously was a guy charging and you don't pass through Osundo unless... <laughs> unless Osundo has charged. And Crispin allowed me to enter that bash. Thank you very much. I'm forever grateful. <laughs> okay? By the way, I'm forever grateful. So it's wonderful to be, um, when I sincerely say I'm amongst friends, I know I'm amongst friends, I can see a lot of people in the audience that I know. I'm really associated with having been a CEO because very many people know me for that, but I have a career that spans about 26 years, primarily in fast-moving consumer goods. Um, I started my career in consumer marketing mass consumer market. I joined Coca-Cola as a management trainee uh, back in the 97. When I came back from my ISEC traineeship, we were in ISEC together uh, at the University of Nairobi from Brisbane, Australia. And that's when I fell in love with sales and marketing. As a management trainee in Coca-Cola in those days, you did everything from working in the factory, in the lab, in, in accounting, in everywhere. But I really fell in love with sales and marketing. So I ended up in senior commercial roles. I left Coca-Cola. I was hired by Africa Online. I was one of the first person to sell data in this town and dial up accounts. You can't believe I have an invoice in my house. I was showing my son the other day. Somebody paid me for a 64KB line. I used to invoice 900,000 a month then. It's unbelievable. What? I just want to show you change things. And, and, and yeah, yeah. Uh, the business I created there eventually became a company called UUNet, which went on uh, the, the, the long and short of it. And then um, after that, after Africa Online, I was hired by East African Breweries or Kenya Breweries then. And I became a market sales operations manager. I became a marketing manager there. So when you see me serving beer, it's stuff I know. It's actually something I do. <laughs> so please stop enjoying me. I mean, it's like serving Coke. So next week I'll go serve Coke and show you I know that stuff. <laughs> and I was a very good beer salesman. Um, and I eventually became a beer marketeer. I actually took charge of a family. In those days, we were several marketing managers and we were very competitive. So there was marketing manager for Tasca, marketing manager for Pilsners, marketing manager for, wh what was it called? Citizen. Uh, or what we used to call it value brands. And I remember my claim to fame is Pilsner overtook Tasca in my time. Uh, when, when, when I was selling, um, 
we did we did beautiful campaigns just like Nairobi to Navivitaka. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did beautiful campaigns like Nairobi to Navivitaka. Yeah. Um, and 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 that campaign was called it was called Mawindo ya Mfalme, you know the hunt of the king. Um, and uh, I, I, I drove that. I really enjoyed my career in consumer goods space. And after breweries, Chris offered me the job to become, I was fed up of being called a manager. I wanted to be called a director. So I remember speaking to Chris Kirubi, and I like the point you make about evolution. So Chris Kirubi hired me to become deputy managing director and marketing director. I said, damn it, I'm coming, you know? <laughs> I moved for a title, you know? But I also moved because it was an opportunity to be in a family setting. When you do multinationals for too long, and I have nothing against multinationals, um, my view is sometimes you lose the juice of life. It's too template-ish. Uh, and I've worked for multinationals for, for very long, uh, and I know you need a mix of both. I wanted to get the real raw entrepreneurial skill, and there was no better entrepreneur to work with. We worked together for 10 years until I eventually became his son, and we were great friends. We built a great business. We distributed, we marketed the best ball pen on earth, which is called Bic. I don't know how many of you actually know, before I go, I'm speaking about city branding, I'm getting there, I'm just finishing my introduction. Um, <laughs> the, I don't know how many of you know actually the word Biro is a brand. Biro. It became a category name. So, and I'll come back to that point later. <laughs> that when you build a great brand, it can become a category name. Just like people talk about Hoover, but they don't know that Hoover is actually a brand that just, it, it actually became a verb, hooving, you know? Uh, it's like hooving, right? I'm told our competitors have invented a word called egathenizing, so they're egathenizing their campaign too. <laughs> now, um, Big is perhaps one of the best brands you can ever work for. It's, by the way, it's the best distributed brand in Kenya. I don't know whether it still is, but you can get a big brand in every single hawker space. And it, so it's really very well distributed, beautiful brand, beautiful product. And in my time there, we became the best big manufacturer globally. And we were an independent factory. We were not run by Societe Big. Uh, of, of France, so uh, that's another kudos to me. Makofi Takuja Masangapi, I'm a politician, you know, we enjoy that energy, thank you. Uh, and then um, after that, um, I left Bic, and in, in Hako, I also invented a lot of brands, and that's when I saw the confluence between brands and politics. There's a hair care brand we launched. Hako was personal home care, um, uh, Product. And we, we, there's a brand also we had called Hako Pegs, which I really loved. Uh, Hako Pegs, you guys live on this side of town. If you go to Pipeline, you'll know that Hako Pegs is an important brand. Because <laughs> you need to hang your clothes. So when I saw flats coming up in Nairobi, I knew I would sell more pegs. At any time, and Hako Ruler. And then, but we launched a brand called, a hair care brand which still exists. I launched that brand. I did all the work behind it. It's called Miyadi. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Miyadi. Uh, and I, and I, 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 I invented Miyadi and took Miyadi to market. But the day we were about to launch Miyadi, it was just when we were going into 07 elections. And Miyadi was color orange. And that's when the Orange Democratic Party <laughs> was very, very unbelievably popular. And you know, we looked at this brand and we were just about to launch, then Chris and I, you know, that's why I tell you, and for those of you who don't like politics, at the end of my talk, I'll tell you, politics is too important to be left to politicians, especially for marketeers. Um, we eventually never launched it. We waited six months for the pain to pass because we knew if we launch Miyadi, we knew it would be a success in Nyanza Western, but it would be an absolute failure in the mountain. Still tell the right honorable Raila Odinga that story and we truly laugh about it. But Miyadi eventually became a success story and was taken over by other people who were better than me in marketing and did a very good job with it. I believe it's still a brand that exists. Um, and the first perhaps locally made hair brand. 
I really enjoyed my career in Hako as a marketeer. We worked with very many marketers there. Um, I see guys in the room who worked with me in research, in media, in agency. Uh, I know that whole spiel, uh, below the line, above the line, uh, been there, done that, ticked all the boxes, but also became a finance corporate first person. Um, because marketers sometimes, yeah, they are punctured because they don't understand the language of business, which is accounting and which is finance. It's all about the order to cash cycle and the procure to pay cycle. And that also, that's what government is about, um, uh, those two cycles. Then I moved on. I was hired by Shell gave up. Shell had given up running business in Kenya especially. In fact, they had shut down all their petrol stations. The last Shell in Kenya used to be found in Nakuru. For those of you who are my age, huh? I'm disclosing my age. I'm only 49, but I have a 22-year-old daughter, so I'm a mze. Uh, I'm, I'm joining the ranks of, of, of Omze. But um, the, the, so when they hired me, I did Shell. We took it as a licensed brand, which is something I knew very well from my Hako days. So that was Vivo Energy. Worked in the petroleum industry. Really enjoyed being in the petroleum industry. It's the first industry I found captured by cartels and captured by organized criminals. Uh, the, ne the other industry is the industry I mean, that's a story for another day. Um, but um, really did that, truly enjoyed, found 98 petrol station, left 200 petrol stations, found Shell number three, left it number one, made millionaires from my management, they made a lot of money and bonuses, including myself, I made a lot of money and bonuses, so I'm not going to make money in Nairobi, I'm going to serve. Um, I'm, I'm truly going to serve, um, and, and that's what I enjoyed. Then I eventually got, you know, I was ready to retire at the age of 45, and a fellow who's really my friend, Mike Mbuvi Sonko Wakivanguli, invited me through Jubilee <laughs> to become his running mate, um, and I failed in that because I, I, I refused, I didn't refuse, I failed. I failed to earn the trust. I never blame anybody. I have never blamed anybody. It's journalists who keep on saying I disagreed with somebody. I wonder why. My resignation letter, which I stand by till today, said I have failed to earn the trust, you know, to do the job I was supposed to do. I'm going to come back to that point called trust because it's at the heart of city branding, okay? The first point I made earlier, I'm going to come back to why trust is at the heart of branding and what you do to develop trust in a city brand uh, going forward. So I took a strategic retreat, kept quiet, but clearly the brand I had planted was, was buzzing. And many years later, my Jubilee party went and did a massive research. Very many other people went and did a massive research. And with 21 political, na with names that could have made it when my, our, our political party, and then uh, that's how I ended up where I've ended up. I, I went and reactivated my career again. Um, oh, I forget to talk about Equity Bank. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm a real useless guy. Or I forget to talk about Equity Bank. Oh, by the way, I should tell you also, because there's always a story, this guy is so lucky with jobs, he moves with jobs. <laughs> okay. I, I, I was supposed to talk about City Brand, and I know you're going for dinner, so please be careful. Uh, um, I did HACO for 10 years, but within HACO, I also took a six-month break to become general manager of Wines of the World. Funny enough, in my career, I'm always hired and rehired by the same employer. Uh, it's not something I've started, and that, so I, I have also sold wine. Um, you know, it's, it's, that's not what I came to talk about, but I c we can talk about it in a different forum. But then, um, I then got hired by, after I left, politics the first time. I then, uh, Dr. James Mwangi, who's a great friend of mine, said, hey, boss, you look, uh, don't get bored at home. What, what are you looking to do? Come. Come. I told him, James, I need three months to sleep or longer. Uh, but then I joined Equity Bank, uh, and I really enjoyed. Since politics and politics now, I've done most of my time at Equity Bank. But in between Equity Bank, the guys in London from Vivo Energy said, you made us so much money you really need to come to London. And so they gave me an, a job as executive vice president of, um, of Vivo Energy in Africa, across 23 countries. I he, immediately I took the job, I knew I had made a mistake. 
Um, because I was traveling so much, but the best people in risk management in the world is the oil industry. So around December of that year, I started to hear, I, was, I, get, I used to get the risk reports, and there were a lot of people who were driving oil tankers who were dying, especially oil tankers that are coming out of China. And we, I was being told it's something called the Wuhan flu, which eventually became COVID-19. Uh, so by March, February, um, funny enough, by March, February, James was calling me and said, uh, you know, my kids didn't like London, we had moved there. So, um, so I, for family reason, really, I, I told them, come back to Kenya. This is the best place on earth, uh, on equity. So I don't know a better place. So I came, um, I came back to Kenya and, and rejoined equity as group chief commercial officer. In my time in equity, I, you know, banks are about balance sheets. In the balance sheet of a bank, you look at the asset side and the liability side. Now, a bank is all about deposits. You see, don't be tissued by a bank because it has a big loan book. Ah, it has a big loan book because when banks give out loans, they choose the customer. When bank take deposits, the customer chooses the. Now here, and you can, uh, you know, the good thing about being a politician, you can gloat. Before I couldn't. Um, I found equity with 400 billion shillings of deposits. I've left equity with 1.2 trillion shillings of deposits. <laughs> trust. Again, it's trust. Um, Isitoshe, we made the biggest profits while I was at equity in the two years of COVID when every restaurant was closed, when every school was closed, when the company had lockdowns. I think I waited until end of March, so the results I, did, I delivered for the group, because I was the businessman in, in, in equity, we delivered 40 billion shillings of profit in a year. And we also became number one bank in risk compliance to central bank and to the authorities. We went to the top in terms of being able to do well, do good, do well the right way. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, I'm the fellow who's looking for a job. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I'm applying to be governor of Nairobi City County on 9th of August. I request that please you tick the box and say, your governor will be Polycap Igathe of Azimiola Umoja Jubilee Party. I really would like to ask for your vote. Can I see by people standing whether you'll vote for me? Just stand. Let me test whether there is a vote. It's okay if you sit down, but I can pay something at the end if you stand up. Thank you very much. I wanted you to exercise a bit. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And for those who are not yet convinced, I hope whoever you vote for, vote peacefully. Politics is not a gladiator sport. Uh, Kenyans have made politics a gladiator sport. It's a place you go to see two people insulting one another, hating one another. On 10th of August, as governor, because I will be. I will, I will govern for those who voted for me and those who did not and you're not my enemy, it is your democratic choice. And my competitors are worthy competitors, they are also Kenyans who put up their hand, so that's all the politics you'll hear from me now, right now. Let me go to the subject of city branding. Thanks for listening to my introduction. Well, I don't have a PowerPoint, I really don't speak to PowerPoints, I only came to speak about three things. Um, in my experience in branding and marketing, I I'm really eager to take on a massive brand called Nairobi City. The most impressive brands and the most trusted brands of cities, in my own experience, the top-notch one in the world is Singapore. Singapore is the hottest city brand I know. And Singapore is not only a city, it's actually a city-state, because it's a city-state. Why is Singapore the hottest brand? It delivers the best value for money. That's the heart of a brand. And what is value? Value is not price. Price is what you pay. Value is what you get. Um, 
And I think many marketers don't understand that, especially the ones who do all those buy one, get one free, which is what all marketers have become. Things I really hate, <laughs> right? You cheapen your brand, you make it look, um, uh, you cheapen your brand and you make it look uh, not great. So why, why is Singapore, and I'll come back to Singapore, how Singapore built trust. Singapore built trust because the president of Singapore, Lee Kuan Yew, called in a few people into a room. And he said, I want to make as many travelers come through Singapore as possible. So his idea was, let me bring as many visitors, because we are a city state, we are a small place. Let me bring as many visitors as I can, make them spend as much money and as much time in my city, uh, and what do I need to do that? So he made a great port. It's most the, the most efficient port in Asia um, and cross-border. And then the second thing he did, um, he went to Singapore Airlines. This guy is smart. Uh, he knows, he understands consumer motivations. I don't know whether you get what consumer motivations are. Um, the heart of building a brand is to understand the motivation of your customer, of your consumer. Uh, that's why my campaign, Nairobi to Navio Itaka is Nairobi Mwataka Nini, you know? And then it's Nairobi Nai to Navio Itaka. It's about the best marketers are the people who serve what the customer orders, not what the chef delivers, really. And I like what Chris said and all the other speakers, is, uh, and what Nancy also, you said. I think you spoke to it. We are many marketers today and brand managers and brand builders have become narcissistic. Narcissism is a pathological occupation with yourself. And that is also a problem with politicians like myself. This race is not about me. It's about the person I'm serving. And even when you're doing branding, that's how we built, that's how Beak was built, that's how Shell was built, that's how Coca-Cola was built. And I'll tell you the power of a brand. <laughs> the other day when I, was in, uh, when I was in Shell, we bought these stations called Engine. I'll give you an example of one. The power of a brand and the power of trust. You know in Parklands, if you go around Parklands, near Parklands campus, there was an Engine there. I'll give you that example. Before we bought Engine, I went to the dealer there, I told him, the day we finish this transaction and I change the colors from blue, white, to yellow, red. Your volumes will go up 40%. Go to your banker and look for money. He looked at me, he said, what? I said, there's nothing. The same stuff, the same pumps. <laughs> but the day I put shell on it, you will sell 40% more fuel that day. Lo and behold, we did that. The day that station changed from engine to shell. I'm just talking about the power of a brand, then I come back to city branding and I connect it with Singapore and trust. So don't think I'm losing you, so follow my trail. I'm a little bit of an eclectic thinker. Um, the, the, when, when we did that, actually he doubled. He told me it just didn't go 40% up. There was, a, there was almost a traffic jam of people coming to his stations because people trust Shell. Now, why do people trust Singapore? Because the president of Singapore said this. He just called in a lot of people and he said, I want to give some people a very simple scorecard that when somebody travels with Singapore Airlines and they are sitting on the last seat in the economy cabin, you know, in the economy cabin, I want them to take exactly 20 minutes if they are going to the farthest hotel from the airport within the city of Singapore. Can you hear what he has defined as success? So how do you define success for your brand? How many of us here actually have a scorecard and that is what we are going to create for Nairobi? Mm -hmm. A simple scorecard. Then he told them, what will it take? What stops us? How come? Then he asked the question. He asked the airport authority and the hotel authorities and his minister of transport. Can you tell me how long it takes the guy sitting in the last seat in a Singapore airline to get to the farthest hotel and have checked in and already showering. And I figure the now hour he was given, and Singapore is like a very small place. He was told it's four and a half hours. He said, what? Four and a half hours because of the traffic jam. So he, then he said, if somebody can travel from a foreign country and use four and a half hours from there to the hotel, we have killed trust. Everybody then hates Singapore. 
There is no way I'm going to succeed. Then he asked them, I want a proposal from all of you on what it takes. The bridges we have to build, the, what I need to move, and if you can't do it, I'll order the army to do it. And today, by the way, if you go to Singapore, <coughs> go and try if you have ever connected to Singapore. The time it takes you from the time the plane lands, taxis to a stop, to the time you get to the hotel, was designed by the president of Singapore. And that trust, and what happened, people became so efficient. And Singapore attracted a lot of travelers. You wanted their cargo to come through Singapore. That's an example of city branding. You're using transport as a tool to brand your city and really give services. And job is massive. Singapore is one of the biggest employers. Many Australians, Americans, Malaysians come back uh, in that great city. So Singapore, very impressive in terms of city branding. Barcelona, it has branded through a football team. Barcelona created a city brand through a sports team. Um, Sydney created a city brand through an opera house. If you think about Sydney, the brand asset you see is an opera house. When you think about Barcelona, the asset you think about is Barcelona. And they don't care how much money they pay. Uh, Barcelona Football Club. When you think about Singapore, you think about their airline. By the way, it has the best good-looking air hostesses on earth. <laughs> Singapore, the people are bloody good-looking. You get into that, even if she pours tea on you, you say, so that's okay. <laughs> I have a problem with Kenya Airways. <laughs> the HR manager needs to speak to me. Must reflect Nairobi. Nairobi is good-looking. Um, let me assure you, that is what branding is. It's thinking 360 degrees and 3D. Then you actually achieve uh, the right uh, level of city branding. So I've given you Barcelona, Sydney, and I've given you, there's another city in Africa. You can say Polycap, you're giving European cities. Nothing in Africa. I love Cape Town. Cape Town has branded through wine, through wine tourism, through tourism. And what did they use? They used the city asset, an asset given by God called the Table Mountain. By the way, it's the ugliest stone ever. And all did they do? They just did a cable car that takes you from here to that ugly stone. And then are many stories about that stone. Then you come down. And then on the floor of it, they give you the story of um, Cecil Rhodes, who owned the Kastenbosch Gardens. And his house, which is now State House, of, uh, of South Africa. And then the winery. That's all they did. S Cape Town took advantage of its blessing, the Table Mountain. Sydney took, a, took advantage of its location and did an opera house in front of the Sydney Harbor, which is a beautiful harbor. Barcelona took advantage of the madness of football in the world and created the best football team globally and invested behind created a city brand. Which is the other city I mentioned? Singapore took advantage of its location and city-state to create a place where people would come. And truly, that's the work of city branding. It's about tapping into human motivation, creating trust, but executing on that trust. It's ideation and execution, which is what marketing is. But ideation has dropped. And ideation in marketing starts with insights. Insights is the underlying human truth. Once you understand underlying human truths and behavior and you unlock them, then you move. And then you create adoras for your city, like I'm an adora of those cities. Um, if you go to New York, New York is another city. You even, many people buy a cup written, I love New York, I love NY. You know that red? Uh, sometimes they even put it newer. Well, how did they do it? They did it through theater. New York is a city of madness, man. If you go to Times Square, you go to, um, what do you call those places where they do acting? You know what I mean, Broadway. Broadway. Um, they create, New York was created out of nightlife. <laughs> New York is, was created out of nightlife. The nightlife of New York. And then they call it the Big Apple. It, and that's under it. The single-minded compelling benefit for New York is the Big Apple. Come in and bite. <laughs> Come in and work. 
this apple is big for all of us. That's what New York uh, was able to, de uh, to deliver. London has done it through transport and financial district. So the hub of financial, and there is no city with better transport network uh, than London. Underground, taxis, buses, um, uh, in terms of how they do it. Look at what we have done ourselves with Nairobi. I've told you Cape Town was built with an ugly stone. We have, right now, if you get into your car, I can promise you in exactly 12 minutes, you'll see the big five. You'll see a rhino, you'll see a leopard, you see a lion. We have a national park in the middle of our city that we have never harvested. With all these marketers, we have never ideated to create the brand called City of Nairobi. In another 10 minutes, you'll be in the be most beautiful rainforest, part of the Abadea Nyandaro ecosystem called Karura Forest and Sigiria Forest. And you'll be in the most beautiful rainforest with walls and Mau Mau caves. And none of us has ever exploited that blessing. We are on the equator. It is sun, it is 12 hours of sun, sunlight, 12 hours darkness, no snow, no wind. Nairobi is not even like Tokyo. You know Tokyo, they build buildings that have to dance the way you are telling us to dance, like that, because of uh, earthquakes, uh, because of earthquakes. But if you look at our bars and restaurant in New York and London, people drink beer and they enjoy their life. There's no on-street parking. People enjoy, in Nairobi, the, one of the biggest problems with children is rickets because of lack of sunlight. There is no vitamin D. You ask the doctors, we are near a hospital, go and ask them which is the least the vitamin people have. We have a public health crisis because of lack of vitamin D. What's my point? City managers require competence. City managers require the ability to create and harness and sweat the assets of a city and then you create a massive city brand. Nairobi's brand when I was growing up was very negative. Actually, it was created out of insecurity in the city. And you remember that name? I don't want to repeat it, but you can remember a time when the city was referred as Nairobi. Remember then? Uh, for those of us who remember that. But we have come a long way. So our best days are ahead of us. I'm very glad I was invited to speak because I'm about to close now. I was, ab I was invited to speak on this subject, and I thought it's really important to say I will use the same tools, toolkit of marketing to make Nairobi city brand from 10th of August, if you allow me. <laughs> and this brand will be so because we have Kenya Airways and we have Jumbo Jet. Yeah? I will even, I bet, recruiter. <laughs> because Kenya Airways is a real asset to the city of Nairobi. Jumbo Jet is a real asset to the city of Nairobi. City of Nairobi, lords and queens, population of 300 million people. But three to bring me another one with a cover. Huh? No, it's okay. Pink is fine. Man, pink, pink. It wants you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, th um, so, 300 million people. Why do I say so? Nairobi, this hospital here, if you go to the beds and see, this hospital is populated by people from Somalia, Somaliland, South Sudan, Congo, Rwanda, Burundi, Uganda, Tanzania. Even the president of Tanzania, you know, was here. <laughs> the late one. I remember Nyerere used to tell people, why do you want to go to New York? Just go to Nairobi here. And you see what the city ha has become. Those are times were like that. Nairobi at one time won an award when the last real manager of Nairobi, an executive lauded over Nairobi, and it was Her Excellency Margaret Kenyatta, Nairobi was voted the city with the best water in the world, 1974. We won the award from the United Nations, this city. UNEP came as a consequence of that, and that's why they, re they even created, the city managers had the vision. They even created a whole neighborhood called Reserved United Nations Development Area, which we all call Runda which was a coffee farm. Those were, those were the planning ideas that were in this city. What am I telling you? What needs to be done to build a city brand? How that needs to be done is not in debate, it's in paper. 
It just requires a competent person who is proven, who has the paperwork, who has a degree, a real one, eh? and, 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 and who has real work experience, who has real work experience, because politicians in this country only work. They wake up at 11 because of a hangover, then they take a two-hour break, and then they start cocktails at three. Yeah? So if you give the job of a governor to a politician, you can imagine, the work of a governor is really not to talk, although you can see I can talk. Um, the, the job of a governor is to really govern and, and, and do executive work. To build a brand requires hard working people. But it also requires you to be a fundi in marketing. I don't know, we marketers sometimes make a problem. We, we, we allow accountants and scientists to run a mark on us. I tell them marketing is fundi. You need fundi skills, it's a craft. Marketing, you don't wing it because you dress well and you speak well. We, you can tell through. I've developed enough marketers to tell enough marketers who don't understand their craft. Ma marketing is about taking people from a journey of rejection of you as a product or a service to adoring you as a product and a service. I mean that process eh? <laughs> as, a, as a political brand. Because you, I, I'm talking about the ladder of affinity in marketing, for those of you who don't know. You start as a rejector, you become an available, then you become an acceptor, you become an adopter, and you become an adorer. That's also how you go got married and how you are going, how you, it's the same journey. That is the journey we have to take people to build a brand. From rejection of Nairobi, to accepting, Nair to being available for Nairobi, accepting Nairobi, ador adopting Nairobi, adoring Nairobi. If you create a city with enough adorers and adopters, the amount of employment you create, the amount of jobs you generate, the amount of joy you bring and happiness to peoples, to families and livelihoods, the amount of demand you create on jobs, food and agriculture across the country is unprecedented. But you need to have a toolkit. You need to have a formula. You need to have an algorithm. That's what they are calling it. And to understand branding nowadays is not like our days when we, ha we had to wait for retail. They are what were they called? RI, research. Research International, I still remember the most important meeting in breweries in those days was sitting down with our MD and all marketing managers to review Research International data on past seven days frequency of consumption, past 14 days frequency of consumption of beer, to really understand what consumption patterns are. I don't know whether you guys do that or you wing it on Google now or all these other uh, uh, listening tools, but with data analytics, I think we have been bombarded with too much information and we have too many marketers who don't know how to read big data to generate insights. In marketing, you must have the skill to look and see. Looking is physical, seeing is emotional. Yeah? Looking is physical, seeing is emotional. Um, and to develop the ability to see, and that is what I, as I close, I would really like to ask all of you to do. For us to create a great city brand, it's up to you, you are the power. It is you who will decide on 9th of August. Look and see, there's a contest, perhaps the most life-changing contest, a contest between a team led by an organized leader, administrator, engineer, a man who wakes up to a calling, a man whose interest is a legacy and has that, and he's leading a team of organized leaders. And on the other hand is a team of mobsters. They are actually coming to extract. It's up to you. Choose. Choose. An organized mob versus a man who means business or a man who means politics. Choose. That is your choice. Politics, a man who means business in politics, a man who means politics in politics. That's really the contest, and it's been called, and it's up to us as marketers to do it. Sorry for weaving in the story of elections, but as a professional, I find that the middle class like yourselves, professionals like yourselves, you have become way too lethargic about city affairs. Even the Bible writes about city affairs. There's a fellow there called Nehemiah. Yeah? That's all I know about the Bible, by the way. <laughs> but go read. And politics is defined, the real definition of politics is politics is management of city affairs. 
That is what it is. That is what it is. But politics for politics sake doesn't take us anywhere. But politics for policy sake by Poly Kapigathe is a no brainer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I know I've taken too long. I recognize that I've spoken so long and I've told you I have my seniors from college so I'll be beaten and they'll charge me a fine and they'll charge me a lot of whiskey. Um, but um, I really want, I'm really heart warmed. I was asking Colombo, is this how marketers are? I'm really a marketer at heart. And it's the only skill remaining on earth that you cannot digitize. Accountants have been digitized. Lawyers have been digitized. By the way, what is accounting? All that thing is run through an ERP, SAP. Yeah? But I can tell you, I used to tell people in commercial roles, you are the only role that cannot be digitized because you are a relationship builder, you are a trust builder, you are an innovator, <laughs> you are an executor, you are an idea driver, you are the person who brings oxygen to the room because you don't think about risk, you think about opportunity. And life is about opportunity. God has taken care of the risks. If you He's the best risk manager is God, right? To be honest, it is. The, 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 you are the person who looks at opportunity. You are the front office. And if you don't set out your antenna there, so it's really an honor that I could come and spend a few hours speaking to you and you listening to me. If you forget what I said, remember a city brand is about developing trust. Trust is born of consumer motiv cracking the right consumer motivations then taking consumers up the affinity ladder, and lastly, lastly, be that being done by competent people, not confident people. Marketing is more about competence, not just confidence. God bless you, as my grandfather used to say.